Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and in this video we are talking about how to choose the right kayak and more specifically how kayak design affects a kayak's performance. Assuming you've already decided whether you're getting a hard shell or a portable kayak, a sit on top or a sit inside kayak, and a pedal kayak or a paddle kayak, the next thing you really want to consider is the kayak specifics of the kayak's design. It's length, it's width, the hull design, things like that. If you're still at the stage where you're not sure about whether you want a hard shell or a portable kayak, a sit on top or sit inside, or a pedal or paddle kayak, well, this is actually still very much relevant, but I do have some videos that deal with those questions specifically, and I'll, make, I'll leave a link in the, the, the description box down below to those videos. But let's talk about kayak design and how it affects performance, starting with kayak length. The length of a kayak really impacts three things. It's speed, it's trackability, which is its ability to hold a course, and it's portability. Now, as a general rule, a longer kayak is going to be faster than a shorter kayak, it's going to track better, hold its course better, and it's going to be more difficult to get around. It's just more cumbersome to deal with a longer kayak. So the length of the kayak also really helps classify kayaks and the three very basic classifications of kayaks and there's there's other classifications beyond this but you have recreational kayaks which typically range from 9 to 13 feet in length uh, touring kayaks which range from 12 to 15 feet in length and then sea kayaks which range from 15 to 18 feet in length now let's talk about the width of a kayak. Now the width of a kayak really impacts its speed and its stability. Uh, and in very simple terms, the wider a kayak is, the more stable it is, but the slower it is. The narrower a kayak is, of course, the faster it is and the less stable it is. And that's again how these kayaks can be classified. Now the width of a kayak also helps classify it as a recreational touring or sea kayak. Now recreational kayaks are typically 28 inches or wider. Uh, touring kayaks range from 23 inches to 28 inches and then sea kayaks are usually 21 to 24 inches wide. Now let's talk about hull design and how it has an impact on a kayak's performance. But before we do, I want to send a quick shout of thanks to this video's sponsor, and that's Gear Lab Outdoors. Now, Gear Lab Outdoors makes a bunch of really cool kayaking products, but, but most notably, they make Greenland paddles. Beautiful Greenland paddles. Now, if you don't know what a Greenland paddle is, what a Greenland paddle is, is it's a, a paddle that's designed to spread the load uh, of every stroke you take over a longer surface area. And what that does is it uh, reduces the impact of every stroke that you take. So on a long paddling trip, it's a lot more comfortable to paddle. Now, if you wanna learn more about Greenland paddles and Gear Lab Outdoors paddles, I just reviewed the, the Gear Lab Outdoors IPIC paddle. It's a brand new one they came out with, a really high-end one, but gives you an idea, tell, tells you more about what Greenland paddles are all about. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. And the other quick thing too is, you've probably heard me talk about this before and I'll say it again, ACA has a online safety course. It's a free, for now, uh, safety course that you can take at your own leisure. It's a very small amount of investment of time. Can make a huge difference in your life. So I would highly recommend take the course. There's gonna be a link in the description box to that as well. Okay, back to it. So now let's talk hull design. The design of the kayak's hull has a huge impact on its performance. And we're gonna look at the different types of kayak hulls and how it affects performance one at a time. It's important though to mention that a lot of kayaks combine hull designs. They're like hybrid hulls that, because they want to combine the best of both worlds. So we're going to talk about these hull designs in the, 
as their own things, but know that oftentimes a kayak will combine elements of these different types of hull designs. The bow and stern of a kayak is not necessarily and often isn't representative of the type of hull that a kayak has. When we're talking about the, the hull design, what we're most concerned about is the, the large central area of the kayak, under where you're sitting and behind, just behind you. We're not really talking about the ends of the kayak. The bow design is something separate and we are going to talk about that in just a little bit. But let's start by talking about flat hulls. Recreational kayaks that are designed to be as stable as possible will often have some type of flat hull. Flat hulls are very stable, but the downside of flat hulls is that they create a tremendous amount of drag on the water. And so they're very slow, but they're very stable. The downside of flat, flat hulls is that they don't offer really any secondary stability. And what's secondary stability? Secondary stability is the stability of the kayak when it's held on edge. And the reason a flat hull doesn't offer good secondary stability is you can't hold the thing on edge. It doesn't want to be there. It just wants to sit flat. And so it pretty much has no secondary stability. What does that mean? Well, that means, well, secondary stability, holding a boat on edge is a key component or technique uh, required for paddling in rougher conditions, dealing with waves and currents and those types of things. And so a flat hulled kayak with, that you can't put on edge is not a good boat for those types of conditions. It's a flat water kayak. Exception to that is white water kayaks that have flat hulls, but that's a different story. And we'll get into that at a different time in a different video. Something else I wanted to note about flat hulls, and not just flat hulls, different types of hulls, is you can see these channels in this hull. Now there's a few different reasons for these channels, but oftentimes you'll find a hull that just isn't flat as a board. It'll have some type of, of ribs or channels or grooves. There's some argument about how it helps a boat track, but that's really not what this is about. What this is about is providing the, this plastic hull with some structural integrity. So every bend you have actually provides it some rigidity along its, along its length. So this prevents, helps prevent the, the hull of the kayak, the bottom of the kayak from warping, oil canning, becoming all funky. That's why nearly every flat hull won't just be a flat as a board hull. It'll have some interesting grooves or designs. So now let's talk about round hulls or roundish hulls because there's very few kayaks that actually have like a, a perfectly round hull. This is the PH Leo and it has a roundish hull and then the benefit of a roundish hull is that you you'll lose some stability that's not the benefit but what you gain is you gain speed and you gain uh, the ease of moving from one edge to the other uh, for secondary stability for tilting a boat on edge and that's why rounder hulls are designed for kayaks that like to go into rough water another reason why sea kayaks often have some type of roundish hull because they like rough water. Another example of a kayak with a roundish hull that I just tested is the new Jackson Kayak NAR fishing kayak. Now, fishing kayaks traditionally have very wide, flat hulls. The Jackson Kayak NAR has a slightly rounded hull and it gives up some stability, but they did that so that that boat could paddle in rough conditions, big water, open ocean, all, any type of water. And so a round, roundish hulled kayak is a more versatile hull. Now let's talk about V-hulls. Now this is the Wilderness Systems Pungo and it has a distinct V-hull and it continues right to the bow and stern. So it does have the bow and stern or it, uh, are representative of the hull style in this case. A VL is designed for speed, for tracking, holding its course, and for secondary stability, for stability when it's put on edge. What it gives up 
is primary stability. This uh, a V hull doesn't really like to sit flat. It wants to be on one of these two flat surfaces on edge. And so as soon as you get it on edge, it just locks into place. It's got tremendous secondary stability. And so the joy of a fleet uh, of a, a V hull is that it wants to be held on edge. And so it's great for paddling in rougher conditions. It also is great for cutting through the water, uh, chop and holding its course when you're paddling. Next up, we've got pontoon style hulls. Now, pontoon style hulls are relatively new developments for kayaks. I mean, they've, they, they're they not that new, but newer than the other types of hulls. This is the native Ultimate FX12. And this pontoon style hull, all pontoon style hulls are really designed to be very similar to flat hulls in that they're very stable, but they track a little bit more efficiently. And so they, they're a little bit faster than just straight up flat hulls. The other nice thing about them is they tend to deal with chop a little bit better, whereas a perfectly flat boat, any waves that are coming in, it's just going to get bounced and slap. This one tends to, the pontoons allow it to cut through the water a bit better and deal with slightly rougher conditions a little bit better. But just like a flat hull, this is not a speed demon. Uh, any pontoon style hull, it's not designed for, for speed, it's designed for stability. And the other thing that it doesn't do well is they don't, uh, don't have great secondary stability. They're not designed to be put up on edge. And so once again, they're not, even though this one will do better than a flat hull in chop, not designed for rough water. So now we're gonna talk about the bow design of a kayak, which as I already mentioned, is different than the hull design. The bow design, the front section of the kayak, also has a pretty, uh, plays a large role in a kayak's performance. Now, this is, this is the P&H Leo again, and this is a great example of a kayak that has a different bow design than the hull design. The bow here is very much a V, it's a V bow. It's designed to pierce through that water. It's very thin, cuts through the water, it helps the, the kayak hold its course, but that V bow transitions fairly quickly into a roundish hull. The reason it does that is because it's the central part of the kayak, not the ends of the kayak, that impact the kayak's stability and its edge control, its ability to, to roll onto edge. This one has a V bow with a slight uh, rounded hull. And with that, it pierces through the water, it tracks beautifully, but provides great uh, edge control um, and speed through the hull. Now, some kayaks have a flat bow, like this one, this is the Origami Paddler, and a lot of inflatable kayaks will have a flat bow or stand-up paddle boards will have a flat bow because of, I mean, that's what they're, uh, it's easier to design them that way, but also some of those stand up paddle boards in particular are designed to have a flat bow because this flat bow, it's not cutting a straight line through the water. So it's much more free to move. That's why a surfboard has a flat bow is so that it, it's very maneuverable and it's that's good for current or waves to be able to change directions very quickly. The downside for kayaking is what every stroke you take, because that, that bow isn't cutting through the water, every stroke you take is turning the bow side to side. And that's why boats or boards with flat bows have skegs or fins in the back to stabilize the boat and help it go somewhat in a straight line. The downside, aside from the fact that it's not an efficient paddling boat to having a flat hull is also when you're in any type of choppy or rough water, this bow isn't cutting through it. It's staying on top and those waves are just going to cause it to bounce. And you get a very rough and bouncy ride with a flat bow. Now, the last thing to talk about with regards to the bow design is the top of the bow. And in particular, you have some kayaks with a big wide 
flat top of the bow and then you have other kayaks with narrow and rounded tops of the bow. This really impacts how rougher conditions or waves will act up upon these boats. And you can imagine a wave lands on top of this big flat bow, it's just going to wash right into the boat and basically swamp the kayak. On the other hand, this kayak, it's narrow, it's rounded, the water will just shed, that wave will just shed right off of the kayak and boom, you're paddling again very efficiently. So just another thing to consider, it really depends on what type of paddling conditions you're going to find yourself in. Last but not least, and, and probably the most underappreciated and misunderstood uh, kayak design elements that impacts performance is actually the kayak's color. I mean, people are surprised, and most people don't know, that kayaks with red, orange, or yellow pigment are less dense, and so they're more stable. Whereas kayaks with blue, green, and black colors are that extra density makes them faster. That can be hard to understand because there's absolutely no truth to it whatsoever. <laughs> but I hope I had you going there for a little bit. There is truth to everything else I talked about with regards to kayak design, the hull characteristics, length, width, all has an impact. That's a lot of information to absorb, especially with the added color curve ball. So one of the best things you can do when choosing a kayak is go to your local paddling shop. They can provide more direction that I can, than I can right now because all of this information has to be put into context for the type of paddling that you want to do and that you're going to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, well, subscribe to Paddle TV, give the video a thumbs up, stay tuned. We got lots more kayaking tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures.